As we sit comfortably today, contemplating the advancements and developments of artificial intelligence over the last few years, it's hard not to wonder what will life be like in 2050. The pace at which technology and innovation have changed our world is staggering. But once this rate of progress has also been compounding on itself until the year 2050, we may be heading to a future that is literally unimaginable. See, I wouldn't be surprised that if because of artificial intelligence in the year 2049, humanity will experience what felt like a hundred years of innovation in a single year. Imagine how much the world changed from the year that the Model T was originally rolled out by Ford to when the iPhone showed up. Compress all of that down to a single year. And then you'll get a sense for how far advanced I think the year 2050 really will be. By the year 2050, I think that we're gonna see a complete fusion between farming and city life. My guess is the urban landscape will bear very little resemblance to the cities of today. With the rise of vertical farming and a focus on cleaning up the pollution that riddles our cities today, our cities will be dotted with these tall, lush structures that will produce organic food all year long. And the integration of green technology like this won't just be about sustainability. It will also be about fostering community. I think these rooftop gardens are gonna be a place where people spend more time getting to know one another. And by 2050, I think these real life connections, especially like people who live together in the same building or work in close proximity, will be like a serious national focus. The way the government has like anti-smoking campaigns, I think that the government in the future will say, hey, remember to get out of your house, like leave your house, meet your neighbors, understand what your community is like from a real person's point of view. I know it's very like Ready Player One of me, but I just kind of think it's gonna be a problem that we'll need like media to address it because we'll only have to be as connected as we wanna be. Like the equivalent of Amazon packages will just zip around our cities on these more industrial drones that have much better battery life and they'll deliver us whatever we want whenever we want it. The focus will be on trying to get people to not just give in to these cravings and actually go out and work for something. Although the boring company would have you think that tunnels are maybe kind of the big thing for traffic, which I think they'll be, they'll have plenty of growth. I think the airways and the skyline are gonna be just riddled with these kind of drone type things. And then on street level, I think there will still be gas cars in 2050 if you really want to. I think streets will essentially look the same, but the vast, vast majority of them will be electric and they will be so much better for the environment. Now by 2050, I wanna point out the decentralized nature of where I think food is gonna be. Having vertical farms on all buildings means that there isn't one central hub that can really disrupt the food supply in the same way, which is much better for the world. But I would argue even more importantly, to solve food scarcity, we're gonna see AI and genetics step into the picture. Using advancements like CRISPR, Cas9 is digital scissors that can go in there and mess around with DNA. That means the world can tackle global hunger by driving up the survivability and the nutrition in food, while at the same time driving the costs down, maybe even close to zero. Now messing around with genetics and all this CRISPR stuff, even though AI is gonna be super capable of it, wait until you see how heavy the regulations are when it comes to messing with biological life. I think there will be like a massive movement and it will be very unacceptable because it's just such a kind of creepy and weird and cascading problem. However, I do think that in the vertical of food and farming, genetics will be completely pulled into a different category. And super intelligent AI will be allowed to go ahead and figure out how to produce food that is more resilient and more robust and more nutritious than ever before. And then we're gonna see vegetables that can grow in all these crazy environments with very minimal water and resources. And a world that's well-fed very likely is a world with less war. Less poverty means less fighting over resources, especially some of those like ones that are on the very bottom of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Plus they can probably make vegetables that grow in some kind of ultra convenient way for eating and harvesting. And honestly with genetics, maybe you even get something that is engineered to taste super good. It harvests really easily. It's totally good to eat day in and day out. And maybe that's the kind of food that like the future will have for us. Yes, by 2050, I think that the planet will have a space elevator. I know it's crazy. Space elevators seem like they're off the table, but let's think about it for a second in a future where we have artificial super intelligence to help us. And probably the biggest and seemingly most insurmountable problem right now is actually just building a cable that will hang together at those kind of tensions. So it's a material science solution that we need. But physically it looks possible because in theory, carbon nanotubes and graphene ribbons have been suggested as possible materials. Now, realistically, producing at the quantity that we would need to build something like a space elevator is off the table now. 
but I think artificial intelligence could help us ramp up precision manufacturing like that. And many of the other problems that would come with the space elevator I think could be solved with simulation, and AI is going to definitely bring us a world where huge simulations like that are possible. Like simulating Earth's rotation and the tidal forces, along with the way that this carbon fiber tether would actually interact with magnetic forces, as well as thinking about how this like carbon nanotube cable would actually be interacting with Earth's magnetosphere. Complicated physics, but artificial intelligence, maybe quantum computing also, put together should be able to simulate a lot of this stuff so that when we build it the first time, it works. Now in 2050, I think that virtual reality could be pretty much indistinguishable from reality. I mean, you don't have to get impossibly small pixels before the brain's completely confused. Headphones can generate all of the types of sound that a human ear can hear. Taste, tactile feedback, 2050, there should be a lot of progress towards that. Even if it's imperfect, it should be enough to convince the brain. You know, attending VR concerts, VR work meetings, AR enhanced physical locations, pure lifelike simulations of video games, I think it's just all gonna be here. Very Ready Player One-like. By the year 2050, I think that implants will be kind of a thing. So what seems like wearables right now, watches and glasses, that just keeps progressing to me into the point where we're like, why is it on top of the body? Like little stepping stones to cyborgs. Like the Apple Watch is just a stepping stone towards being a cyborg one day, let's be honest. Now, of course, many people in 2050 will still be opting out of these kind of surgeries, but I think plenty of people will be down. Because it's easy to imagine devices for all sorts of stuff, for better athletic performance, for monitoring your health, we're tapping into more virtual reality experiences, but the power of AI is that it can recognize super subtle patterns. So if we have a little artificial intelligence device that sort of sits in our bloodstream somewhere and watches what's happening in our bloodstream, it should be able to pick up on patterns that both lead to healthy outcomes and unhealthy outcomes. Like imagine being able to predict a heart attack a minute or an hour or even days in advance. It might not be possible, but there might, you know, what about problematic proteins that are building up in the brain? Maybe little pieces of those proteins like break off, they travel throughout your system long before it causes damage. And this would be a system that could pick up on that. I don't know if those are great examples, but there are patterns in the blood that lead to different health and performance outcomes. Hormones, you know, they're a thing. They have patterns, pleasure, pain, all that stuff, cortisol. I mean, there will be some kind of pattern when you're feeling good that things are in balance and individual AI can learn that about each of us. Now, oddly, I wonder if by 2050, the word artificial intelligence, the concepts that we're talking about now are actually less commonly talked about than they are today or leading up to 2030. Because I certainly expect ASI and AGI to completely transform the world, but after a certain point, I wonder if it starts to fade back into the background of our society. You know, like we don't see news articles every day being like, oh my gosh, the assembly line and the hammer, they are just like changing the world, even though they're still out there kind of changing the world. We might go back to just talking about more human centric things, government, social needs, safety, wellness, stuff like that. As incredible as 2050 is, it might be a time when ASI feels like a thing of the past because it's so directly woven into society as a whole. From your personal assistant to your daily routines to AI-driven education and tutors, it's just part of our lives at that point. And like, of course, predicting the future is always a blend of educated guesses and putting timelines on it is the worst because sometimes you can imagine these things coming, but putting the exact time of 2050 on there, eh, who knows? But there is one thing that's certain and that's change and change that's changing at a rapidly changing velocity, an exponential, something where there's compounding effects and there's more worldwide collaboration that means it ramps up in speed. And hopefully that's a reflection of the best of our humanity because if it's not, either one is probably gonna spiral up. And when it comes to social media in 2025, I hope to have 6 billion subscribers. And to do that, you'll need to invest in that subscribe button right now.